Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're now on the final lap of our conversations here. And we're talking about John Jerry Rollins, Ghanaian's longest serving uh, leader who has been released to rest on Wednesday. And we'll have a report here for you. We'll be playing that in just a minute. And uh, just to let you know, we also have a very important guest, Daily Momodu, to uh, talk about this issue, paying tribute to the former Ghana leader. Let's now take a listen to this report. The ceremony venue is adorned with red, gold and green in horizontal stripes with a black five-pointed star in the center of the gold stripe. That is the flag of Ghana. The funeral service is in honor and immortalization of an outstanding leader in Ghana, John Jerry Rollins. He was the longest serving Ghana's president of 19 years in active service, paying tributes President Akufuado, his wife Nana Ageman Rollins, his eldest daughter, representative of National Democratic Congress. The party he founded all paid glowing tributes to a man they described as a colossus. We came to see value in each other and understood to a very large degree our respective perspectives. One thing we had in common was our mutual commitment to public service. My visit to his rich residence in 2012 signified the easing of tensions between us, leading to a friendship that lasted for the better part of some eight years. Jerry, I know that God created us for each other. And today we make a formidable team, notwithstanding the ups and downs of life. We believed in each other and in our dream of making Ghana a country we could all be proud of. One to set the pace for our sub-region and continent. I dare say we did not do a bad job. As you worked assiduously on state matters, I concentrated on empowering the women and improving the quality of life for them. With attendees observing social distancing, the exaltation by the pastor was prompt and rich with beautiful renditions of music. The late officer and the gentleman won several laurels, both home and abroad, because of his deep sense of patriotism. The Air Force military burial had lots of uniformed presents to honor him in their ceremonial outfits for the lengthy procession round the city and as the great leader was lowered to his final destination. According to many contemporary African historians, the name J.J. Rollins will be remembered for his mentorship, rare leadership, democratic values, eloquence and humor. He was born in 1947 and passed away on the 12th of November, 2020, in Accra. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. The ceremony. Thanks, Destiny, for that report. Uh, we're now being joined by the publisher of Ovation Magazine. Uh, we're talking about Daily Momodu. Thank you very much again for joining us. Thank you and good morning. Good morning. Uh, we just played the report on his life, and I wanted to ask, um, I wanted to ask you, um, when you hear the name J.J. Rollins, what comes to mind? Oh, immediately revolution. Uh, he led a major revolution in his country, Ghana, and that revolution was going to transform Ghana for good and hopefully forever. Um, so, no. go ahead, please. Oh, well, I, I'm Chief Dele Momodu. Um, good morning once again. Um, you are someone who has, in decades, you know, had relationships with some of the most popular um, Africans and people across the world. Um, I, I want your thoughts on, of course, uh, to share a little bit with us on your times that you spent with uh, Jerry Rollins, uh, if you, the times that you may have met him. Um, what kind of a personality was him and what is Africa losing um, with his death? Uh, we had a very, very robust relationship uh, with the late uh, president of Ghana Flights, uh, Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins, a man I like to call Junior Jesus. Uh, some people called him Junior Jesus, some called him Junior Judas. 
but I prefer to call him Junior Jesus. And he was always laughing about it. Anytime I called him that, he would say, oh, chief. But don't forget that some people call me Junior Judas. You know, he was a very, very humorous man. He knew that not everyone liked what he did for Ghana till today, especially the elite. But the ordinary man on the street uh, was extremely proud of him, very grateful that he liberated their country. And uh, the longest interview he ever granted was to Ovation International in Ghana, spanning five days and we, had, we recorded a total of 18 hours of interview where he told us everything about the revolution, all the good things that happened and their mistakes, you know. And uh, also, our relationship was such that I was able to invite him to Nigeria with his entire family. He said normally he doesn't fly with his full family on the same flight. But he came with me on the flight to Lagos at the invitation of the governor of night shift, uh, Mr. Ken Caleb Solumese, who wanted us to have a grand house reception for him at the uh, nightclub in Okwebi in Lagos. And he came and uh, he spoke, he addressed, you know, the Nigerians on that occasion. I also took him to uh, State House Marina, where he met with the then governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola. Uh, so he had very, very healthy relationship with Nigeria. He loved Nigeria. And um, I mean, what I would always remember him, about him was his total selflessness. You will not believe for a man who led his country for about 19 years, uh, you could not call him a rich man. He lived modestly. Uh, I remember one of his favorite cars, a sports car, was a second hand car which he bought on the on the internet, <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, when Ghanaians were saying, oh, he, he had money and everything, I told him, I said, even a local government chairman in Lagos would have lived better than Rollins, you know, I had to go on radio to, to defend him after we published his story and all that. And uh, his wife, uh, Nana Konadu Ajuman Rollins, uh, they were always together, their love was very infectious. Uh, and Ghanaians generally loved them. Uh, the, like I said, the elites, of course, would complain. And uh, what were the things he did for his country? One, uh, before attaining power, Ghana was down on its knees. Ghana lacked commodities, even the most basic of commodities. They had to ration vegetable oil. They had to ration soap. A lot of them scattered across West Africa. Most of them came to Nigeria. And uh, they had to engage in the uh, mineral jobs, you know. But when he came, he made sure that he started creating a lot of activities, building infrastructure which provided jobs uh, for his people. He, he was tiring roads, he, he was, you know, doing a lot of flyovers, he made sure they had electricity, and their life came back. Uh, to normal, uh, of course, at a huge cost. It wasn't easy. They had to enforce discipline because he believed that what was lacking was discipline on the part of the leaders. He had to stamp out corruption. Of course, he killed some people. He will tell you that, of course, uh, there were mistakes made, that he was not a perfect man. That's what I admired most about him. A lot of leaders, especially in this part of the world, always feel they are infallible, they can do everything, they know everything, and nobody can put Rollins would admit to, to, to his own errors, and uh, he left everything else to posterity. All right. Um, Ghana is noted to be one of the most stable democracies and economies in Africa. And we know the role that, uh, you know, Rawlins played in this. So how would you quantify and qualify uh, Rawlins' influence on Ghana's politics till today? Oh, he, he stamped his authority. He had his signature on whatever is happening in Ghana today. In fact, a lot of people believe that he shouldn't have died when he died because there was an election uh, coming and he just died really months to the election. And so 
its impact is being felt even now by the members of the political class. They believe that if Rollins was there, all the controversies about whether there was election rigging or election grabbing would not take place, that people would be more afraid. The fear of Rollins was the beginning of wisdom in Ghana. People feared it. Even you will see him sometimes in, in, in traffic. He will come down from his car and he will become the traffic warden, you know, directing vehicles and telling them, you can't go, you have to go on one lane, you, can, you know. And there were videos that went viral of him doing things like that. Uh, so the, the, the politics of Ghana today owes a lot to him uh, because he, after Rollins, then the democratic system became more stable in Ghana. And uh, from time to time, every leader, whether you are in MPP or in NDC, wanted to be his friend, wanted to be his, in his good books. And that, that's to tell you uh, how powerful he was for the end. Hmm. And we could really get a sense of how powerful he was, you know, seeing the respect, you know, the people paid to him at the Black Star Square, you know, since Monday. Uh, what would you say, you know, were the feelings that you had, you know, regarding the fact that you had a close relationship with Rollins and, you know, the, the funeral ceremony that held uh, yesterday? I've just received pictures. Uh, from the Ovation International team that co covered the funeral. And uh, Ghana came to stand still uh, for their fallen hero. I mean, like I said, he, he was passionately loved by the Ghanaian people, of course, minus a few elites. In every society, uh, the people who would always suppose the revolution are the elites who benefit from the rot of society. Uh, so, uh, I'm not surprised that the funeral, the state funeral he got, uh, the president of Ghana, uh, Nana Adudangwa Kufuado, you know, uh, gave a very powerful speech at the funeral, a funeral oration that was uh, well received. Of course, his wife also delivered a speech, which was delivered on Abia by one of the daughters. You, you know, uh, it, it was such a moving funeral. It was something that should tell other African leaders that do good, affect your society, affect your community, affect your country, and be a global player, not a local champion. Rollins was a global player. You, 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 you compare him to Julius Nyerere, you compare him uh, to Nelson Mandela, you compare him to Kenneth Kaunda, you compare him uh, to Jomo Kenyatta. You know, these were leaders that transcended their immediate environment. But there are leaders in Africa who feel that they only owe their own immediate environment everything. No. You know, you must touch lives. And when you touch lives, it will reverberate across the seas and the oceans, and everyone will remember your good work. Mm -hmm. Rollins will remain one of the greatest African leaders that ever lived, and I am happy that he got his due, you know, even in death. All right. Um, we're out of time on this conversation. Just before we go, in uh, less than a minute, if you can, quickly tell us about Ovation Magazine. It has been popular for decades. I remember growing up reading and uh, always scrolling through very beautiful pictures that Ovation Magazine captured. Um, is there new plans for you know the magazine this year and where are we headed with regards to that? Well, it's, I'm surprised that you are seeing this. It's like you are, you are clairvoyant. Ovation will be 25 years old in April this year, and we're hoping that COVID permitting, we'll be able uh, to have a little celebration somewhere along the line. It's difficult now to fix a date because we don't know what's going to happen. But for 25 years, we'll be promoting the best of Africa, celebrating Africa. Before vision, most news you know, about Africa was negative, but we decided we were going to do a positive magazine. People told us it was not possible because good stories don't sell. It's only bad news that sells. But now we have Ovation International Magazine, we have Ovation International Television, and we are on the platform called our TV, 
uh, which is a new platform you buy a decoder and that seed no subscription and then we have the boss newspaper so we're expanding and we're very right. huge on social media uh, we have a vision uh, public relations where if you want the best news about yourself the best packaging you talk to us and you can be sure that we will turn you into a global superstar and not a local champion. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank Chief you. Dele Mawondu, thank you so much for speaking with us this morning. Rest in peace to John Jerry Rollins. And of course, uh, looking forward to another conversation with you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have Absolutely. a lovely, lovely day. Thank Very you. True, sir. All right. Uh, that's a great way to wrap up the program this mm -hmm. morning. Um, I personally have admired Dele Mawondu for a long time because, you know, of the magazine. And, um, you know, in, 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 that, in an era where there wasn't, there really wasn't a lot of those type of magazines um, in the you know, early 90s um, until, you know, yeah. now. Um, it's always very, very interesting to see how much success that um, he, he has recorded and the magazine has recorded. Um, yes. And, uh, you know, going back to what he said about uh, John Jerry Rollins, really important things, important qualities about his life that African leaders should learn to emulate. Because, I mean, what do you want to go down? in history for to be in the black books of you know the world or to be to be noted and to be listed among the leaders who made positive change and influence in the lives of people around them but anyway the choices is a lot, a lot of african leaders don't care um, about that um, you can catch up on any part of the breakfast that you may have missed uh, join us on social media at plus tv africa um, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and same with our YouTube channel. And, of course, uh, all of the clips and information that you may have missed on the program this morning. And you can also re-watch, uh, you know, some of these interviews that we had over there. Yes, YouTube plus TV Africa. My name is Annette Felix. Have a day as beautiful as me. And I am Osao Georg Bowen. See you at 9 a.m.